Today's workshop, we're going to talk about styles of communication. Now, we're most likely all aware of different types of communication. We have verbal communication, nonverbal communication, written communication, listening communication. There's a lot of different style, I'm sorry, a lot of different types of communication. But what we're going to focus on today is different styles of verbal communication. First and foremost, tell me what you guys think. Why is it important to understand styles of communication? Basically, you're going to help that communication that you're having. And one of the other byproducts of having a good understanding of styles of communication is it's going to build your relationships. You're going to have better relationships. Because as you guys know, communication is probably one of the most important aspects of whether a relationship is good or bad. Many other factors, but the communication is one of the most important. So what we're going to talk about first are the four styles. And the first style is passive. The next style is aggressive. Third style is passive aggressive. And fourth style is assertive. So I'm no language or communication expert by any means. But it's pretty cool from my understanding of this is that every type of verbal communication can fall into one of these four categories. And then once you can understand the different types and different styles of these verbal communication categories, it only makes you that much better, that much more of an improved communicator. So we'll talk about the first one. We'll jump in. And what I want to try to do today is get everyone involved as much as we can, right? We want to make this learning and fun at the same time. So the first style of communication being passive is defined as a style of communication in which individuals avoid directly saying what they think or want and often involves uncomfortable body language. Many people with social anxiety end up using passive communication. So with that definition, I want to do a quick role play with someone. Does anyone want to volunteer for this? Johnny, you volunteer. Do you want to be the individual talking passively, or do you want me to talk passively to you? I want you to give it to me. Okay. All right. So let's say we're having a conversation about nine rounds. Your fitness workout, yep. right? Yep. So you just had, in your mind, a good workout. Yep. And now you're trying to get me to come to it, right? You're trying to convince me to come to your workout. So you say something like, go ahead, try to convince me. You need to do this because there's no excuse not to, right? First thing in the morning to late at night, wake up early and get it done. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I guess we could try it. When's the next time you go? Tomorrow morning. Maybe, maybe. We'll think about it. Passive, right? I'm kind of unsure about my feelings, unsure about my emotions, unsure about my response. It's a very passive response. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. You yeah. want to stay for the next ones too? No, I think okay. this is good. All right. So did everyone catch my passive response? So as we go through these different types and different styles of communication, you're going to see a better way to answer that. And we're going to live in that same example. It might make it a little bit easier. The next style of communication is aggressive. All right, and aggressive is defined as a style of communication that is characterized by an individual with high emotion, low empathy, and a focus on winning an argument at any cost. That's an aggressive style. So now we're going to do the role play. Who wants to be that role play? Come on, Kaylee. Make Kaylee be the aggressive one. No, I'm going to be the aggressive one. Kaylee's going to convince me again to come to her workout place. Hey, hey, Kaylee. <laughs> so I go to CrossFit Heights, and I think you should really go. It's awesome. Um, every day I go after work at 5.30, so you should come on. Yeah, listen, Kaylee, I don't have time for that. It's the last thing I want to do. I'm not going to play your type of games. What else you got? I mean, that's okay. We can also go to the park and get a I'm done with you, Kaylee. I got to go. <laughs> we'll talk later. Very aggressive, very uncomfortable conversation, but that's what aggressive types of style communication does. Thank you, Kaylee. Good job. Good job on your part. We'll give it up. So you guys see the difference in the two styles, right? Very passive with my response towards John, but certainly aggressive in my response towards Kaylee. Now, I think it's safe to say for neither one of those types of communication, that's beneficial for anybody, right? Kaylee left feeling weird, like I put her in a weird position. She's like, what the heck is going on? I'm just trying to convince you to help you, right? John, he wasn't sure what the heck's going on. He doesn't know if I'm coming, if I'm not coming. I said, maybe we'll talk about it, think about it later on. Very uncomfortable. So the next style 
is literally a combination of both of those. And it leaves the other person on the other end of that conversation in an even more uncomfortable position. So this is defined as passive aggressive, which is a style of communication where individuals appear passive on the surface, but are really acting out anger or frusta frustration in a subtle, indirect, or behind the scenes way. So who's my next volunteer? You guys are volunteering, Joy? Come on, Joy. Come on, Joy. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to stay in that fitness example? Sure. Okay. So you're going to try to suggest that I come to your fitness gym. Right. Okay. You should really work out. It's not helping not to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to go to the gym? <laughs> I don't know, Joy, like, what kind of results do you even get going to the gym? I get a pump on, I get strong. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good myself. I don't, you know, nah, let's, uh, I got better things to do. You know what? I'm not going to talk about it. Very weird. That's a <laughs> passive aggressive response. Like, it's hard for me to even try that because I've like programmed myself not to be passive aggressive, even though I am sometimes, but good job, Joy. Let's give it up to Joy. <laughs> So my passive aggressive response, everyone identified that, right? I, I kind of gave her a shot and I was trying to be nice, but you know, mean at the same time. So I apologize, but I gave you a shot. Like you suggesting I come work out with you, but I'm asking you, you know, what's the point of even working out? What kind of results are you getting? Right? You guys see that? Cool. Thank you, Joy. Fourth style of communication is assertive. Now assertive is defined as a style of communication where individuals express their point of view in a way that is clear and direct while still respecting others. And I think you guys could tell out of the four different styles that we've gone over so far, this is like the one you wanna practice the most. This is gonna help you have good, good communication, good relationships, a better overall feeling on both sides of the conversation. So who wants to be my role play model? Is it Mara? Thank you, Joy. Volunteer tomorrow. Come on. All right, Mara, we're going to stay in the gym fitness example. Okay. Try to get me to come over there with you. Um, so I go to the gym after work. Um, I've lost 30 pounds in the past year doing it. I think that we could do it together and hold each other accountable. Wow. I like that. I mean, congratulations on the, the goals that you've achieved. You know, I really like that idea. Where is it at? Um, so it is five minutes up the road, so it's super convenient, and we can go together after work. You know what, Mara, I love it. It's a great idea. Thank you so much for actually including me on this, because it's been one of my goals as well. So You're I'd welcome. love to jump into that with you. Awesome. Can't wait to see our results. There we go. Thank you, Mara. Appreciate it. So style of communication, assertive. I was very direct, to the point. I didn't beat around the bush. If I wanted to go. I said so. Now, at the same time, if Mara's trying to convince me and I really didn't want to go, say, Mara, I appreciate that opportunity for you to invite me, but unfortunately, it's just something I can't, I can't take on right now. I don't have the bandwidth with my schedule, whatever the case may be. But very assertive to the point. Doesn't mean you have to go along with whatever that person on the other end of the communication is suggesting, but you're, just, you're expressing your feelings and your emotions in a very clear and direct way. Does that make sense? All right, so four styles of communication. Which style of communication is best? I think we answered that, right? Does everyone have a clear understanding of those different styles? Does that make sense? Um, so clear and direct communication. If a, now, an example that we can use in the office, right? Um, a lot of sales and client success is on the phone with different clients. And I'm sure just by going over these four examples, you can identify some clients that fall into each bucket, right? So the one most important thing to talk about, which may take longer when it comes down to understanding and really using these styles of communication. If there's a passive person on the other end of the phone or at the under, other end of the conversation, what do you think is the best um, style for you to use? Assertive. Still assertive, right? What if that person's being aggressive? So you don't think that if someone's being aggressive, you should match them with aggression? No. Why? That's, make sure you guys understand that and hear what Kaylee said. When you have two aggressive people going back and forth, like that conversation is going to explode. And that's just the nature of the beast. So if you have a client, like a real life example, if you're dealing with a client that's being very aggressive, 
You cannot, unfortunately, you cannot match their aggression, but you have to come at them at a very assertive approach. And it's, you know, a lot of things we talk about, about taking control of the conversation, directing them more to objective, which are like facts about their account or whatever the case may be. But you have to do your best in order to guide that person to an assertive style. So people, I guess, normal, regular people don't really know the definitions of these, but I think even like you guys didn't know the definitions, but you can identify at times when you may have been assertive or you may have been passive, or if you may use passive aggressive at times. You know what I mean? So a lot of times just when you're in that midst of a conversation and if someone is speaking to you a certain way, a lot of times we naturally progress to match that style and that's dangerous. So it's now that you have a good understanding or at least are aware of it, be mindful where you wanna be assertive more often than not. Assertive is the best style of communication. It's the one that's gonna make not only you feel better, but also get that person that's on the other end of that conversation to have a better relationship with you. Uh, a couple things about how to improve communication. First off, like I mentioned, be aware of your communication style. If you often lead the conversation with assertive, that other person will naturally migrate that way. It doesn't always happen, so just be mindful of that, be aware. Uh, always use that ass assertive style of communication. So one thing is when you communicate poorly, others often mimic your style, like I mentioned. So stay with that assertive approach, and more often than not, you'll maintain that assertive style with both ends of the conversation. Now, this is a different tactic. It's called confronting and leveling with assertion. So if communication styles are not aligned, confronting and leveling is a good tactic. I'm not gonna get too crazy into it, but like the real life example is if a client is coming at us very aggressive, you know, and you're trying to be assertive, but they don't, for whatever reason, they don't wanna match your level at a, in a proper professional manner, sometimes unfortunately, the conversation has to be elevated to a confront and level. Where it's like, excuse me, Mr. Jones, I need you to stop, like lower your breath, take a deep breath, whatever the case may be, just lower your tone, and I just want you to listen to what I'm saying because what I'm telling you is very important to make sure you have the better understanding of your campaigns or your marketing budget or whatever the case may be. But that's at a confront and level. Now there's different styles, whether it's on the phone or in person, but just know that's a good tactic and it takes a lot of practice because it's uncomfortable. You know, a lot of times when we have bad communication, like I said, we match that aggressive style, but if we just stay assertive and confront that person and level with them, get them to understand why you're trying to get them to talk in a more smooth, direct, and professional manner makes a big difference. So, guys, I hope you all learned something today. Can I get a, a raising of the hands if this was helpful at all? Awesome. That was the whole goal. I hope we had some fun. I hope uh, our little role play examples made you guys laugh a little bit. But uh, is there any questions? Anything I can help answer better? Do people with uh, an aggressive mindset, do they have poor listening skills? Again, no language expert, but chances are they, they don't have what's called active listening. So has anyone heard of active listening before? A lot of times it's like the whole, I guess, metaphor is described as you only hear what you want. Right? So if someone's aggressive, they don't care. They have low empathy. Not necessarily no empathy, which you guys all know what empathy is, right? It's caring for others. They have low empathy, whereas they only care about themselves. So yeah, a lot of times like you may be talking to them and they're not listening to you because they don't want to hear what you're saying. Yep. So again, that, that example, like depending how elevated it is, it may require that confront and level. It's like if the conversation's not going anywhere, it's like they're coming at you aggressive and you're still trying to maintain assertion, you've got to confront them. Confront them, level with them. Hey, listen, take a deep breath. I really need you to understand what I'm saying because what I'm saying is going to help you. I'm not trying to come at you at a, an aggressive tone as well. I just want to be very assertive with you to make sure you understand. Cool. Any other questions? Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you letting me do this today. Let's have a great day.